Good evening, gentle listener, and welcome to Distractable, a Wood Elf production. This week, Wade wants to explore the mystery of why we sleep and the expansion of the universe. Mark gets spooky about gases, games, and deprivation. Divine Bob makes his body into a huge temple and jabbers about Firefly and E.T. Yes, it's time for Solving the Unsolvable. Now, sit back and prepare to be distracted and enjoy the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Distractable. I'm your host today. Wait, uh, this is the show where <laughs> we do things what and, uh, was that? that was my name. Wait, wait, no, okay, pretty straightforward. Well, as you can tell by the other voices interrupting my beautiful intro, I'm joined by my friends Mark and Bob. Mm-hmm. Bob. Hey, Bob. Mark. Mark. Bob. Uh, I'm Wade. Wait. Um, wait. This is a show where, I don't know, we talk about stuff, we come up with our own little format, whoever's hosting can kind of do their own thing, they assign points arbitrarily or by some rules they establish, and we announce a winner at the end, that person hosts the next episode. So, there you go. What's the game show this week, host? Nothing. Uh, All all right! right. Very creative. I I have a topic for us to discuss, but we're gonna throw it back to the OG days of, like, two months ago, Uh, where we didn't have, like, a thing every time. We're just gonna have a good old-fashioned (laughs) sit-down, campfire, fireside chat. I love on the subreddit all the posts that are like, Back in my day, (laughs) Distractable had (laughs) had titles for their stories, (laughs) and they they told personal stories. It's all ruined now in the modern era. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it's not that not that old of a podcast. Sorry, guys. I'm sorry, guys. We've evolved. You know, it's it is one of those things where you think about it, like because we've been on the internet for a very long time, so the time scale of which people are accustomed to change is very small in comparison. Like we've been doing this for nearly ten years, all of us. But yeah, if people are on the internet, one year is a long time, and if things deviate in one year, that's no good. It's like, oh God, can't deal with anything. It's so long ago. (laughs) We've been on the internet for ten. Ten? Ten time units. Ten years. The internet has changed us. It has. It absolutely has. My my YouTube account and my Twitch account are both over ten years now. I didn't make any content until like November of 2012, but mm. the account's ten years old. Where's your my compilation YouTube account? Whoa. Oh, oh, no, oh, yeah, make a compilation, Wade. I, th- I think my YouTube kit is like 2014 or something. I was late. Mm-hmm. A compilation of all my old stuff would be the equivalent of getting a baby diaper and just showing people a picture of the innards after it's been used. Gross. Hey, guys. <laughs> Welcome back to episode 38 of Settlers of Catan. Oh, when are you going to pick it up again? Yeah, when are you going to finish that series, man? Maybe that's my plan for 10 years. Nothing but Settlers of Catan for the next 10. I, I am so curious of how many of distractible listeners are aware of some of our older series that we have done. Like, how many people out there are aware of of drunk Minecraft, and if you want more Mark Bobway content, there is a wealth of it, but it's back in time before we became the performers we are today. Yeah, it's really boring. Don't watch it. Okay, well, a lot of people claim to be viewers. Like I've I've had hundreds of people <laughs> like I was your I was your top ten subscriber. Uh, and it's like yeah. really well, you're the five hundredth top ten subscriber I had. Mm. My my community has a really simple test because mm-hmm. the the test is they're like oh I love I've been a watcher for a long time I love your community I love it you stream on Facebook <laughs> yeah okay well not anymore I had someone in stream the other day that was like I've been watching you Mark and Bob for like twelve to fifteen years now and I was like really <laughs> that's five years where we weren't making content you creepy person why <laughs> yeah. are you staring at us <laughs> like I've had I had someone just the other day that was like oh I've been subscribed to you since 2010. Oh, I'm so proud of how far you've come. And I'm like, yikes. <laughs> Have you? Have you? <laughs> Which account? MyNeighborMarkiplier.com? Dude, I didn't even have a YouTube account <laughs> until I started doing YouTube. It's weird to think about. I made my YouTube account to comment on your videos because I didn't want to have Wade Barnes as my, like, caption. I was like, I'm just gonna come up with something to comment so I could not be me. I was like, oh, just Lord Minion. No one will ever know. It's a stupid name. Lord Minion. I think I literally made my account to have an email, which is why my, my name is, like, the school assigned 6 plus 2 uh, mail address thing Mm -hmm. it wasn't even a username i picked on purpose and this is my whole life now (laughs) i I told you guys long ago like you could change those if you want it's not too late it's too late i don't want to be barnes goo i'm gonna stick with lord minion now it's (laughs) now it's too late back then when you had like a few hundred or a thousand subscribers you're like but i got a thousand subscribers which at the time i get it but it was still just like too many then it's too many now can't change (laughs) just imagine how many good names there could be with bob Mm -hmm. as part of it 
Mm -hmm. That would be so easy to find and clickable and funny. Mm -hmm. No one can fucking spell my username. <laughs> <laughs> it could be touch my Bob 69. Touch my Bob wow. 6. Wow. Uh, there was a, I forget. Oh man, Amy just showed me the video. I'm going to get roasted. I don't know. But it's someone took Ninja's master class on streaming and then tried to become... Drew Drew Gooden, yeah, Drew Gooden, yep. uh, and then tried to become like a Twitch streamer using those techniques. And what I was fascinated by, like Drew Gooden has a popular channel. You'd think that people would, more people would have stumbled across his stream, uh, but freaking nobody did and nobody recognized him. It's just like that, that was just so heart crushingly depressing. He did a really good job of like keeping that secret and masking it. I mean, he didn't really disguise himself or anything, but no, no, it was, yeah, the, the 24 hours stream he did was such a funny ride yeah man i can't believe that like i've done a 24 hour so you guys have probably done 24 hour streams maybe i imagine both of you have i don't know i've tended to avoid it i think like 14 or 16 is the longest i've done but yeah 24 hours a slog 24 hours is a lot i was gonna do a 48 but i hit my charity goal way before at 24 hours so i was like i guess i can go to sleep now all right Yikes. bye i just don't like the long-term health ramifications of doing like long content without sleeping and stuff mm -hmm. Well, thank God you take such care of your body outside of streaming. <laughs> I, you know, I've actually... It's a temple. I've mm -hmm. been doing... Last week, I, I decided I was finally like, oh, you know what? I'm going to lose 30, 40 pounds. I'm just going to do it. So I've been eating better. I've been ordering out less. I've been trying to do more <laughs> stuff at home. And uh, I'm trying to do the elliptical uh, three to five days a week, as well as doing push-ups and sit-ups and stuff. That's really nice. good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've also been starting back in workouts with Alex. I bought a treadmill, a cheap one. It has a permanent incline, so it's like the motor is like under it. So oh, it's mine's just like an incline or not. I, I, I like kind of wanted the incline because I like walking at an incline for uh just like pure exercise. But it's at an it it's an eleven percent incline, so it's pretty intense. Ooh, that's so, deep. So I'm always walking at a very steep incline, and it's it's really great because I'm just walking at like two and a half miles an hour, but my heart rate just rockets up to like one forty. Um just because it's how like long do you go an hour usually i try to go for about an hour Dang. well i put on like a tv show or something or a korean show I'm running man usually but it's been nice you want you want to something kind of this i guess this is kind of cringe i went back and i started watching re-watching your old outlast one playthrough oh really where i was doing the elliptical mm -hmm. i found that like watching horror games got me more like zoned in mm -hmm. and i was like oh if i watch people play horror games i'm thinking less about what i'm putting my body through and more so about what's happening on screen mm -hmm. and so i'm trying to go back and just find horror content like old horror content and I, that's what I'm watching while I'm exercising. And it was, it's been more helpful than music, more helpful than other things I've been trying to watch. We watch his Dead Space playthroughs. Oh, I've never watched Dead Space or played it. I don't want to be that guy, but your Dead Sp all all three of your Dead Space playthroughs. Yeah, I've watched every single video. They're like some of my favorite Let's Play series online. Oh, thanks, man. That means a lot. Yeah, and what, the, what happened to you? You used to make such good content. I know that was good <laughs> stuff back then, man. No, the Dead Space remake. Off. The Dead Space remake is coming out soon, and I do want to play that. It's just like there hasn't been a lot of really good long horror game specific games. Those are the Let's yeah. Plays I like doing long series of. I don't really like doing long series of any other game type besides horror games. I should just go, I should redo Dead Space. Uh, you honestly could. You know, I've thought about going back and redoing old games that I've not done in a long time, revisiting like Outlast mm -hmm. and stuff. I've thought about it. You were talking about how like people don't know all the content that's out there of us and whatever, mm -hmm. that you could redo series. And so many people haven't been around and seen those and they'd be like, oh, he's playing The Dark Descent. Yeah, absolutely. Oh God. Yeah, didn't you do a FNAF revisited or something? Yeah. yeah people enjoy that. And that's been less time since those Dead Space ones. Like, I definitely could. And it's not even like a milking content thing. I really want to go back. I just did a video yesterday where I was playing a horror game and a sound reminded me of Slender the Eight Pages. Mm. I was telling you this before I started recording. Yeah, yeah you did. And uh, it was one of the things where I had to stop, go download Slender the Eight Pages and play it again. It was like a burst of nostalgia. But then I realized I was still scared of it. I was still getting spooked by it because I had forgotten just that it actually was a scary game yeah. when you have been like away from it for so long and also just like it's a different era of type of horror game and the the mechanics with which it does jump after you and kind of like jump you it's it's cheap sometimes but it works and i was like man there was a reason why this kind of like popped off the way it did yeah it is what it is well i guess i should take us as much I, we could talk about this for an entire episode probably but uh, I do have a, a topic for today. Yeah. I suppose it's a little bit on the philosophical side, but it's something I, I don't know. I've been thinking about uh, whenever I thought about health and things like that. I never feel like I have enough time in the day sometimes because of like sleep and just being so busy. And it's like, why do we even need to sleep? And that brought me to the question of like unsolved secrets of the universe or unsolved mysteries of things. 
like sure. for, for example that question why do we need to sleep for what i know there is not a definitive actual answer that we know for sure well, is why we sleep okay that we know definitely is the reason we sleep maybe scientists would not draw such a strong conclusion i feel like we understand the fundamental reasons why you I mean, human body to an extent sleep. yes but what does sleep actually do how does it work there's, there's so many things I, I just want us to theorize a bit today we're going to put on our science caps and we're going to solve a few different mysteries of the universe without looking anything up are we doing this oh, all for you want. you can look up other people's theories you can just guess on it whatever honestly there's no there's <laughs> Wait, no strings attached let's to create it. a structure mark okay okay just if we if you're cool that way yeah, yeah, you are the researcher you're allowed to look at whatever you want and find the truth if it exists and see what people think i will not research anything <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great i will offer you only the knowledge i already have and or any crazy ass theory that i decide to come up with mm -hmm. i don't even think i need to research i think i'm just going to listen to your guys's theories and whichever one sounds better i'll you know I'll, maybe they'll get the point you could just decide what's true <laughs> You are the arbiter. I wait, am playing God today. <laughs> you will decide what's right. All right. Okay. So I'll take the role of trying to do as good research as possible, but I might just happen to mix in anything that I, you know, yeah, I no, feel is. It doesn't have necessary. to be like good research. Just you're allowed to Google stuff and whatever. Uh huh. It's as much research as most people would do with a cursory Google search, <laughs> right? Yeah. You're, know. you're, you're, bro. Trust me. <laughs> and I'm a conspiracy boy. Whatever you all want. Okay. All right. Okay. Cool. Both best bad options but we're making it happen <laughs> all right this episode of distractible is sponsored by helix sleep helix sleep is a premium mattress brand that provides tailored mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences speaking of unique i had the weirdest dream that i was sleeping on like the tip of a mountain but the tip was like really protruding into my back oh no was it a pyramidal mountain yeah it was like really hot and really pointy right into the middle of my back you must have been at the flux point of the north and south poles as there was some communication burst being bounced off of the atmosphere what the aliens are trying to communicate with you um, in my sleep? Yes. Wait, if you want my opinion, I think you might just need a, a more comfortable mattress. It's funny you mentioned that, because I had another dream that I was like a caveman and I was sleeping in this cave, but like there was like a, a bench, like a, a stone bench, and I was trying to sleep on the stone bench, but it was too short for me. So like my feet were hanging off and then my head kept like falling off the side. Stone bench, stone bench, stone hands, stone hands, ancient aliens. Maybe. Helix has like a sleep quiz that you can take and they will find you your mattress. They have like luxury lines. They have a uh, big and tall. That reminds me of the dream I had where I was falling. And then I woke up and I was on the floor next to the bed. I tried to get back on the bed, but then I realized the bed was kind of like too small and the dogs had taken my spot. And I guess I'd rolled off because of that. I think that just might be the dogs. Oh, Helix sleep can improve your sleep. Mine has been great. I don't wake up in the middle of the night being abducted by aliens. All right, well, I had to throw my pillow away after the dog peed on it. Do they sell pillows too? Helix is offering up to $200 off all of their mattresses. Plus you get two free pillows if you go to helixsleep.com slash distractible. That's H-E-L-I-X-S-L-E-E-P.com slash D-I-S-T-R-A-C-T-I-B-L-E. With Helix, better sleep starts now. So our, our first question will be sleep. Explain sleep. Why do we sleep? What does sleep do for us? Those kinds of things. Okay. I don't know in like a scientific way, but I feel like I know a little bit about this that is real okay. or maybe real. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure one of the main functions of sleep is to allow your brain to essentially get to restart. That part of what happens when you sleep is that memories and information goes from short-term to long-term memory in your brain. And it's how you process all of the information that you take in consciously and subconsciously. And it allows you, when you wake up the next day, you feel mentally refreshed because your brain has done whatever it does, which I don't know how the process works, to like purge the, the intake, the in pile, get what's important stored away, maybe, hopefully. And then you start the next day because there's so much info you take in, you don't see it all or you're not aware of it all, but you're constantly taking in, every sense is taking in info every moment you're awake. Cumulatively, it's just a lot. So I think that's a big important function of sleep is that your brain literally needs to like purge the inbox and start fresh 
Okay. Okay. All right. I think that's acceptable. You know, it didn't have a title to it, but you know, it's a, it's cute. It was oh, cute. Are we doing it was titles? Cute. It's a cute news. Well, we, the you know when we were a good podcast, we did. Yeah, when we were oh, a good okay. podcast. The title for that retroactively is the honest to God truth. Wow, that's believable. Okay, the honest. God. <laughs> me being God today, that's honest to I me. Was honest I honest to you. I, so. I do like you being honest to me. Yeah. My title, my glorious title, is called the Russian sleep experiment. Oh no! Come on! Come on! Yes, that thing yes. Is a, that's a nightmare. That's an actually, right. It's the truth. It's the truth. Do you know this way? Do you know what he's referencing? I believe so, but I, you know, for the sake of everyone out there listening, go ahead. Okay. Russian researchers in the late 1940s kept five people awake for 15 days using an experimental gas based stimulant. They were kept in a sealed environment to carefully monitor their oxygen intake so the gas didn't kill them, since it was toxic in high concentrations. This was before closed circuit cameras, so they had only microphones and five inch thick glass porthole sized windows into the chamber to monitor them. The chamber was stocked with books, cots to sleep on, but no bedding, running water and toilet and enough dry food. They weren't food. kept in separate cells. It was one big one room. Big one big room, right? Big room. Okay. Everything was fine for the first five days. The subjects hardly complained about having been promised falsely that they would be freed if they submitted to the test and did not sleep for 30 days. Their conversations and activities were monitored and it was noted that they continued to talk at about increasingly traumatic incidents in their past and the general tone of their conversation took on a darker aspect after the four day mark. After five days, they started to complain about the circumstances and events that led them to where they were and started to demonstrate severe paranoia. They stopped talking to each other and began alternately whispering to the microphones and one way mirrored portholes. Oddly, they all seemed to think that they could win the trust of the experimenters by turning over their comrades, the other subjects in captivity with them. At first, the researchers suspected this was an effect of the gas itself. After nine days, the first of them started screaming. There's a lot more to this. I won't read the entirety of it. And I will just say this last uh, blurb towards the end here. There's a lot of gory details. And this mm. might be gory. Yes. So plug your ears. It's going to be a little gory. Content warning. The second survivor had been the first of the group of five to start screaming. His vocal cords destroyed. He was unable to beg or object to surgery. And he only reacted by shaking his head violently in disapproval when the anesthetic gas was brought near him. He shook his head yes when someone suggested reluctantly that they try the surgery without anesthetic and did not react for the entire six hour procedure of replacing his abdominal organs and attempting to cover them with what remained of his skin. The surgeon presiding stated repeatedly that it should be medically impossible for the patient to still be alive. One terrified nurse assisting the surgery stated that she had seen patient's mouth curl into a smile several times whenever his eyes met her. When the surgery ended, the subject looked at the surgeon and began to wheeze loudly, attempting to talk while struggling. Assuming this must have been something of drastic importance, the surgeon had a pen and pad fetched so the patient could write his message. It was simple, quote, keep cutting, end quote. The other two test subjects were given the same surgery, both without anesthetic as well, although they had to be injected with a paralytic for the duration of the operation. The surgeon found it impossible to perform the operations while the patients laughed continuously. Once paralyzed, the subjects could only follow the attending researchers with their eyes. The paralytic cleared their system in an abnormally short period of time, and they were soon trying to escape their bonds. The moment they could speak again, they were asking for the stimulant gas. The researchers tried asking why they had injured themselves, why they had ripped open their own guts, and why they wanted to be given the gas again. The only response given was, quote, I must remain awake, end quote. So I think that's why we need sleep. Yay. Beautiful. So you don't become a crazed, drug, gas, addicted psychopath? Mm-hmm. How many days was it? Were they at this point like nine? The total thing was 15 days they kept them awake. Nine's when they really start. Like four days are acting funny. Nine days they really lost it. They were the last subject. No, normal, normal. I think like 15. Yeah, okay. Something like that. So day four, they're like, mm, okay, they're, they're acting a little strange. Mm -hmm. Then day nine, they were, mm, this isn't good. And then day 15, they're like, cut me open, Surgeon Daddy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Surgeon Daddy. They're basically, um, what were those things? From the, the Firefly universe, Reavers? Reapers? Reavers. The, the bad guys in Firefly who were like self-mutilating, space crazed. Uh, I've never watched Firefly. I've never but... watched it either, so I don't know. What? I know. I've heard I, it's I really know, good, but it only goes a... one season, so I'm like, I don't it's want to feel the disappointment everyone else does. Worth watching. If you know it ends, then you get to just enjoy it, and then when it ends, you're just like, ah, okay. But does it have an ending? Uh, no, it ends with a lot of open storylines. Okay, great. See, that's, that, that would drive me nuts. It ends with an obvious expectation of having another season, but there's oh, a movie, right? which is okay. Hmm. 
The show is really good, though. Mm. But anyway, that is effectively that description of the the mentality of the survivors is like what the what the bad guys in well, some of the bad guys in the Firefly universe are mm. very scary. Mm-hmm. I don't want to like rain on this too early, but isn't this fake? Isn't this fiction? Oh, oh no one can know. Oh, okay. Who can? I, know? I can't research it, so I'm just, I'll just <laughs> trust you, researcher Mark. <laughs> Who could yeah, say? I guess I have to as well. I don't know. I could research it, but man. What's true, not true? Well, what is true, Wade, God, Daddy? Yeah, uh, that's true. Well, so where I got this idea from, I, I had the idea about sleep, so I was looking up, like, mysteries and things. Um, this website, interestingengineering.com, has an article, uh, just to cite my source here, The Six Greatest Unsolved Mysteries of the Universe by Zachary Tomlinson. So credit to you. Mm, Tomlinson. So there's all kinds of things here that he mentions about sleep. I'm going to read his little blurb here. Uh, the simplest of theories is purely that sleep is energy saving based on the fact nature values and activity and storing energy for what is not needed. Animals that use a lot of energy are not going to survive. Mm. Problem is humans are very different from most animals. Big complex brains may use sleep differently than the organisms. Another popular theories sleep allows the brain to purge itself of unnecessary information what bob was talking about yes my theory is popular mm. uh, sleep is the price we pay for learning aha uh-huh. um that's weird that's threatening hmm. it's the price you pay however while we know that that is how long-term memory works uh, it, it goes into like how like you know long-term memory stuff neurons uh, i'll read it recent research suggests that sleep allows strong neural connections we form and learning to become pliable enough to fit in with the rest of the information stored inside our head but no one's been able to prove that sleep is how that process occurs mm. it happens while we sleep but is it because we're asleep or is it because you know who knows we can't prove that part of it however to mark's point here um without sleep attention starts to lapse intelligence plummets body starts to ache and eventually we die so the intelligence plummeting can be a bit of like okay the conspiracy crazed thing so i think they're all related but it's interesting do we do we get energy back when we sleep is it powering our bodies down like if we're just talking about it what makes sense here because an eight hour sleep right um, people assume eight hours is what you would get on average or what like your body would want to get if it could always choose sure that's how much i sleep yeah yeah some people only sleep like we have a friend that only sleeps like four or five hours a night and then he's like i wake up on my own i'm good for the day my body likes eight hours Mm -hmm. if i can get eight hours i'm good Mm -hmm. if i can get nine hours i'm great if i can get seven (laughs) hours i'm mm, begrudging what is what billowing begrudging oh begrudging. begrudging okay i thought you said billowing begrudging life i'm bellowing if if eight hours makes you great then what does 10 hours give you i think if i sleep more than nine then my body i wake up and i felt that like groggy feeling like if i took too much melatonin and woke up earlier somewhere it's kind of like i'm awake but like i still feel a little bit of like not hangover it's almost like that light hangover feeling or whatever where your body is just kind of like a little a little dazed mm-hmm. so too much sleep i feel that way gotcha but a third of our day uh, let's say devoted to sleeping is a lot for our lot a third of our lives we in theory sleep away mm-hmm, which sure. is kind of crazy well what's interesting is like some animals sleep different amounts like obviously we have a giant brain so obviously if if it was to do with the brain we would need more sleep but i think horses sleep like two hours uh horses those dumb horses if only they had brains yeah 2.9 hours in terms of the animal kingdom it's a large animal but how big is their brain do they have a large brain brain i don't know um horses are pretty smart like i've seen a lot of evidence that horses can i don't know but they seem to be as smart as like dogs and stuff they can be trained yeah they clearly connect with humans and have like emotional connections they're not just like oh run around oh big jump (laughs) (laughs) they they Uh, feel stuff they (laughs) learn stuff yeah yeah and uh, you know and pretty complicated stuff they're capable of learning and understanding Mm -hmm. yeah oh big jump oh Oh. (laughs) Oh. well some animals like um the hibernating animals right like there's like frogs that bury themselves in the mud for like months at a time bears hibernate do they sleep the entire time they hibernate yeah but that's a survival tactic for like conserving energy as opposed to sleep which could be construed as like it's a conserving energy thing yeah but it could be a combination of all of it like you need to conserve energy but also like horses you know they're kind of nothing really for horses aren't fucked with in the animal kingdom for the most part other, other than by their horses no yeah (laughs) but it's it's kind of one of those things where they so they don't have too many natural predators and humans don't really hunt them that much so they kind of like didn't need to conserve as much energy because they can just go eat whatever the grass they want and that's readily available so maybe they needed less energy conservation and then for their brain size because dogs if they are a similar intelligence dogs sleep like 12 to 14 hours a day they sleep all the time yeah they love sleeping um so it's like i I wonder 
I don't know dog history all that much, but a lot of the, like most of, if not all the breeds we know now were intentionally mixed over the years to become the breeds they are. So like the original dogs are what, like wolves, coyotes? Wolves, yeah, I think so. That's usually the most understood. What was the origin of a dachshund? I believe a lot of the specific breeds were sort of selected and or developed because they were bred by people for a purpose. And so they sort of evolved yeah. to have features that fit that. Well, they also don't have to worry about much because they're in a house all the time. So I wonder if like a wolf or a coyote has a different amount of sleep than like a house trained dog. I don't know if most dogs are house dogs or not. I would be curious. I would guess that most dogs in the world, especially if you include like strays and stuff, mm -hmm. probably outside dogs. Mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of house dogs in America and in, you know, certain parts of the world, but dogs are kind of outside. Even little dogs, like little terriers and dachshunds and stuff, they're hunters. I mean, the dachshunds were like uh, rodent hunters, right? That's why they're so short and long. Yeah. They root around, they go through the barn and whatever, and they hunt, they hunt rats and things. Mm -hmm. Dogs kind of are outside animals, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean... Well, I was going to say something else, but now I've forgotten it because the dog thing. Hmm. Oh, I had another point, but I didn't want to move on from this. I have another point that's like another topic we can discuss about sleep. Hmm. This is pretty casual. Well, so. well you're God, so whatever oh. you think is best. Well, I was going to say, I can't say if one comes from the other, but there's an obvious thing that contributes to why people and animals might sleep in the nighttime, which is you can't do shit at night. Mm -hmm. If you live in a world where a, a big bonfire in the middle of camp or candles or whatever, whatever light sources you have are fire-based and relatively shitty compared to modern lighting where you could basically have daytime constantly wherever you are, outdoors, whatever, unless your species evolved to be like nocturnal, and you have some level of night vision or like bats can do stuff at night because they don't really see anyway. They mostly use the sonar, echolocation type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Why would you be awake at night? It's boring. It doesn't serve a purpose. It's more dangerous as a human in whatever historic time to be outside and not be able to see if there is predator a danger you can't do anything useful so you might as well sleep you got a point probably that has an evolutionary significance and why so many animals sleep through the night or tend to sleep at night but obviously not all animals do that some animals are nocturnal some animals like dogs kind of sleep on and off over the course of a day mm. and they have pretty good like they have a lot of rods right dogs have sweet rods it, what they have a lot of rods rods are the things in your eyeball that yeah, are responsible for night vision right because cones give you color oh, but rods like, are more sensitive i to... must have missed the eye conversation <laughs> like no, I didn't premise it at all. I just said that dogs have great rods. I just followed because I used to work with eyes. So right, right. Rods, okay. Like, um, yeah. At first I thought dick, but then I was like, oh, he means eyes. I do mean eyes. I don't like that you were the one to come to the logical conclusion, and I <laughs> was the one thinking dicks. Some Mark who doesn't understand anything. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't Maybe know. you should research rods over there, well, Mr. Well, how long are we going to research sleep? Because Google I got a lot big more... dog rods. We do have a lot <laughs> to go over. I'm not going to Google that. I'm not going to do it. I don't know what comes up, but it must be funny. Are there any living things that don't need to sleep at all? Maybe like viruses or bacteria, but yeah, I guess it depends like how that. wide your scope of living is. Yeah. Living organisms that are not like big multicellular animal type things probably don't ever sleep. Jellyfish, uh, most Jellyfish. plants, you know. Okay. It's kind of like pretty much anything with a brain sleeps. Take that, jellyfish. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. I don't I don't know much about them. I know they're they're weird. Oh, apparently bullfrogs maybe don't sleep, but hmm. it's inconclusive because they were tests strangely. Okay. Never mind. Never mind. We don't know. Moving on. Well, on. how do you test that? You have a bullfrog and you just sit up all night and every 10 minutes you're like, hey, you asleep? And he's like, nope. Hey, Gary, you awake still? Yep, yep, still awake. I, I don't know. It, se it seems like they just shocked it ah. to see if it was awake. But I'm like, that would, would wake me up. Yeah. <laughs> That's what my cursory glance at that said. It was like, they shock it. And then and, and it's like, a big old slap on the ass. And if it moves, we know it's awake. Is it awake? Oh, <laughs> oh yes, awake, boss. <laughs> every every half hour, we throw it against the wall. And when it lands on the ground, it looks back and it's like, ah! And I'm like, oh, he's awake. Weirdly enough, after the uh, 50th throw, it finally went to sleep. It's still sleeping. It's yeah. been sleeping for weeks now. Crazy. Uh, not so even. Well, obviously, I was right, and I'm a genius. All right. Because that guy in that article you quoted was said what I said. He even said purges, and I said purges. 
I'll give you four points. There you go. Sounds like a lot of points. That's a lot of points. Mark, you want some points? Yeah, I'll take some. You get two. Oh, cool. Hell yeah. <laughs> half the points for half the research. All right. I mean, I was twice as right. I don't know. Half the research. <laughs> I don't know. All right. This episode of Distractable is sponsored by Visa. Guys, I've got it. I'm changing up the game. I've got a brand new Visa credit card and I am about to buy the most expensive cinema camera on the market because I am going to revolutionize the entire film industry. Why go with the most expensive one? Yeah, aren't those things like tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars or something? I want to be the best, so I got to buy the best. Doesn't the content matter more than the price of the camera? You, you could get a very nice camera. I don't know if you need like movie, like cinema grade camera. Um, Runs. going to get the nicest camera i paid eighty five thousand dollars for it so oh. you can guarantee it's a nice camera Ooh, i'd refund that one you changed the game with like your date with markiplier and all that stuff and you didn't have that camera then it was the format that changed the game no no think about how much it could have been better well, yeah bob and i could have been in it spend what you want i guess but maybe not the eighty eighty five thousand dollar oh no that's not all that i bought 85 is just the beginning that's like barely scratching the surface the lenses alone to really get that mm, delicious cinematic look. Uh -huh. Those were uh, like 440000 for a set oh. of 12 lenses. But I got 12! That hurt. Oh. Think of the value per lens. You need like two. Okay. What if you're in a situation where you need 12? Then get out of it. I'm glad that you got a credit card with such an unbelievably high limit. Oh, no. I didn't put this on the card, you know. Okay. I took out a second mortgage for the camera. I took out a third mortgage for the lenses. It's actually amazing. I just keep going to different people and they keep giving me more mortgages all of you guys out there whatever you're bold enough to try maybe don't try it as hard as mark did but visa has the power to help bring your game-changing ideas to life visa anyone can change the game What's another interesting, fun topic? What about the origin of the universe? That's a fun one that won't make people mad. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. yeah, that's really easy. I know the answer to that. So there's the Big Bang Theory. I think everyone's heard of that and mm -hmm. maybe watched the yeah, show. Yeah, that show. It's a fun... That's a lie. <laughs> and we have the cast of that show not here today. So <laughs> thank you all for not joining. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry, you guys thought there was going to be a fun surprise, and we don't have those here. But there's Big Bang Theory. Obviously, there's different um, religious theories as to the start, you know, uh, God, and I'm sure there's the gods and stuff from other uh, nations and whatnot, things that are beyond my scope of knowledge. But th that's an interesting one, because no matter what you think about, there has to be something that came first, right? That's the part that nobody can wrap their minds around is, well, what came first? But if they came first, what came before them? Or what they just always were? If that's the case, why can't the universe just have always? been but the universe there are theories that the universe is still expanding and growing which means that it was once much smaller if not a nothing that then boomed uh people think that we're part of an organism so it was just like a sperm meeting an egg and that was the big bang and all of a sudden we're like in the liver of some giant creature we're the mitochondria <laughs> we're the powerhouse no we're the cancer dude Look at you. we're the cancer of the cell <laughs> there's no way we're a good thing <laughs> hey we've done some good things before a few times here and there for ourselves not for well, the planet so or the universe i, I don't a tree think. once that should count for something oh, wow cool, cool. Well, what have you done what have you done I, I don't know uh killed a lot of the animals and eaten them that were probably supposed to be the mitochondria Destroy, destroyed a tree to terrorize a <laughs> raccoon once <laughs> i did do that yeah i showed that tree and that raccoon was what uh, if i'm a good person and i'm definitely still cancer i think people are probably cancer for whatever being we're in but that's another one, but what do you guys think about the origins of the universe? I am not going to presume to know enough to preclude anyone else's understanding of it. No. I, mean, I believe in science. Let's leave it at that. I don't want to ruffle any feathers because I'm not going to tell anyone what to believe. I don't know the answer. But I think it's an interesting question in, the, in terms of what humans and human perception is capable of of really understanding. So you think about the universe, and I don't know the numbers on this and I can't look them up, but if you think about the universe, time scales, human time scale is measured in like thousands of years. Even if you go back to our genetic ancestors, it's to like tens of thousands of years, right? Which is not, it doesn't really even compare to like geological time scale in terms of how long the earth as a planet has existed, how our solar system formed and like what we know and understand about how all that works. That's measured in a whole different scale of years than humans really can like appreciate. And so the universal time scale is so much bigger than that. Yeah. I feel like it's not even within 
within the realm of where humanity is and how our brains work. To appreciate and understand what that answer is, even if some being or God or whatever told us the answer, I don't think humans could really process it and, and understand what that meant. I heard this thing, the um, Voyager probe. It was originally supposed to be it launched in the 70s, I think, and it was originally supposed to have a mission length of like five years or something like relatively short. It's still going. It's been doing extended mission stuff. And now it's like leaving our solar system. And it's it's just passing like Neptune or just past Neptune, something like that. And it's going to take, I swear, I think... The article said it's going to take 30,000 years or possibly 3,000, some number of thousands of years to technically leave our solar system. And it's not traveling insanely fast. It's not like approaching light speed or anything. But like humanity might be gone from Earth. The Earth might not even exist or, you know, have suffered a dramatic solar flare or something. And that little probe that we launched into space will not even have left our solar system. So I just... So the Voyager will have gone to get milk and it'll be like, it's coming back. <laughs> and it'll finally come back with the milk and the house is gone. Yeah, but like, so I just feel like humans are not in a place physiologically or socially to understand and appreciate what an answer to that question might even be. The answer might be out there in terms of the physics and what we could measure and perceive in the universe. But there's no way we'd really understand it. Because we don't understand the universe, we understand humanity. And it's like, you know, an ant trying to understand what an airplane is and flying from one country to another, you know? It's not even within it. So I think it's an interesting question, but I think the answer is a really lame and very philosophical, I don't know. Mm. Is that your title? <laughs> lame and very yes, philosophical. Yes. My retroactive <laughs> title is, I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, okay, good, good, good. Researcher Mark. Bob started this off by saying he wasn't going to presume, and I just got to say, I'm about to presume. Oh, presume, daddy. Presume all over us. I'm going to presume all over you. Okay, so the reason I bring this up is because there was a recent kerfuffle in the Big Bang origin theory oh, okay. uh, research just recently. Because if you don't know at home, if you've been living under a rock, the James Webb Telescope launched, and it was perfect in every way. It's beautiful. Everything about its launch. Nothing went wrong. Wrong. Uh, oh, shockingly. And it's like how many systems were in the James Webb that had to go right in a, in a row, in a row for it to deploy all of its mirrors and calibrate it perfectly. It was something in the order of hundreds of different individual systems had to work perfectly and be exactly as designed as just goes to show that humans can, when they work together at a real thing and they think about it for a very long time, they can make sure that something works. And the precision on the mirrors, the grinding and the polishing. Oh. Woo. It's good stuff. Oh, man. The kind of like idea of like how f f refined these things are. So anyway, it made an observation recently that was kind of disturbing to a lot of people, but I still haven't understood exactly the ramifications of this data. Some people are saying it does throw a wrench in. Some people are saying it doesn't. But what happened was the James Webb Telescope made a discovery of galaxies that were apparently existing between 400 and 325 million years after after the universe, quote unquote, began. Sure. Right? Okay. And so okay. that doesn't sound crazy on its surface until you realize that the previously established theories did not suggest that galaxies could even have formed at that time in that short of a time frame, in the relative shortness time frame of the universe, which is about 13.8 billion years ago that the Big Bang is theorized to have occurred. And so for when that explosion occurred, energy had to dissipate. You have an explosion of that magnitude you have something like the big bang the biggest bang to occur that set off the chain reaction of the universe that is an energetic event on a scale that we cannot fathom it, like if that is the origin not with that attitude i mean technically it would mean that it was an explosion emitting all of the energy that exists in the universe as we understand it yes which is like <laughs> unbelievable you do e equals mc squared on where m is every bit of mass in the universe that's the energy that was released uh and maybe one to skip a few on that <laughs> who knows uh, i got six <laughs> Is it six? There are at least <laughs> eight six. planets. I just did it in my head real quick. <laughs> six mass. You don't know the unit I'm using. It's six, but just don't six worry about energies. it. Six energies. <laughs> six Bob energies, big energies. <laughs> but there's some like, there's some people are kind of debating it because the weird way telescopes work is when they look into the distance as far back as they can, they're actually technically looking back in time because they're looking at light that is only hitting us being that we're 13 billion light years away 
away from where this initially occurred. They're not actually looking into the past, but they're looking at events that occurred 13 billion years ago and are only just now hitting us. Now, be that as it may, you know, that light could have been interfered with over such a long period of time, could have been lensed, like it's could have been impacted, it could have bent. Sure. Light is a little bit mobile. An alien with a magnifying glass, like <laughs> hey, humans, would you think you know what this is? <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna think that Big Bang ain't real. They made some fake galaxies <laughs> in a in a time in a space where it would reach us at the right time just to fuck with our perception. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> So where I'm going to presume actually is like something that I've thought about a lot and I, I really don't know of the actual validity of it, but it's like my, my thought process, is like the universe looks 13.8 billion years old from where we are. And the funky thing about time and the way light moves is light moves very fast, but in the scale of the universe, not fast at all. Something 13.8 billion light years away from us is not the edge of the universe as far as I know. It also has a 13. 13.8 billion light year bubble around it. That's just the radius of the bubble around it. So if you go here to 13.8 billion years light years away, and then there, it's not the edge of the universe. There's another 13.8 billion light years away from it that it can see because Do of we the, assume we're on the edge. We're there is no edge. That's the thing. Oh. There's no edge of the universe. There is no like outer edge Unless of the bubble. Like they're like 13.9 <clears throat> billion light years away. There's a sign that says last rest stop before next universe. Universe work ahead. Ooh. We just haven't had the technology <laughs> to observe it yet. That would really clear a lot of I things sure up. I hope it does. Sure yeah, it would. <laughs> Better bring it back to Drew Gooden. <laughs> yeah. And so like my presumable issue of this is that what we're seeing in the observation is not necessarily a direct correlation of what is because it's like the unreliability of knowing what that light has been through emotionally to get to us who knows what? Emotionally. how are we able to like uh, like just take that uh, on its big journey that it's taken and been like give us answers like how rude is it to that light some pure light with a little lollipop and all these hopes and dreams by the time it gets to us it's like poorly shaved and it's been through a lot it's working a horrible <laughs> nine to five every day it's wife left it it's just like here humans this is the universe enjoy the wife light <laughs> this is what you want to see isn't it <laughs> <laughs> you want to see me in my purest form don't you this is it <laughs> unbridled rage uh yeah anyway. no that's a really good question though because i i know almost nothing about this but i'm going to talk about it the colloquialism that uh, people often will drop is that time is relative right mm. but what that really means is that space time can warp Based on the theory of relativity, uh, if you were traveling uh, near the speed of light or whatever, time time actually is relative. You would experience time differently than humans back on Earth or not traveling at the same speed as you would experience it. Does that affect light? Is time relative for photons traveling trans universe? So I don't know how it works, but like it could get yeah, something like that. I do something there. Kind of like I, I've watched some videos, done some reading on it, but I don't know for, for sure. But from the perspective of light, because it is moving at the speed of light, time is instantaneous. Hmm in our context that time is. From the moment a photon is emitted to the moment a photon hits something and dissipates into whatever other form it needs to be, the journey with which the universe around it is occurring is instantaneous because the movement through space versus the time is inversely correlated. The faster you go, the more contracted your time like vector is. And the more like slower you are, the more elongated your time vector is. Right. And gravity and like its warp a space time has a play on this and also your speed so it's like the gravity warping and your speed affects your your time dilation inverse to each other uh so a light particle going at the speed of light experiences all events of the universe of throughout the duration of its existence instantaneously so it both is born and gets to its destination to it instantaneously to us and oh. our frame of reference right. because we are observing it we have a different time dilation and it is relative to us versus its own it's it's relative experience and time is different to our experience observing that that light particle wow we're gonna take a quick pause everybody at home i hope you've been paying attention it's time for your pop quiz all right <laughs> 
<laughs> <laughs> so I did not explain that well. And again, I'm not, I don't have a perfect understanding. I don't have a, a degree in, in like light physics, theoretical, theoretical physics. physics. Yeah. I don't have a degree in anything We're not like experts. that. We are three idiots who are theorizing based on other people's theories. That's yeah. cool though. See, that's the thing that makes me think that there's no chance humans are alone in the universe. And there's an unbelievably high chance that we just can't even perceive whatever other beings or creatures exist within the universe because the likelihood that we exist on the same plane of reference as another unrelated species from however many millions of light years away potentially mm -hmm. seems not great but i don't know it just seems like there's such an infinite number of different types of existence that could exist for other species beings in the universe they're probably watching us like we move like snails across a long empty plane or something i have no idea but that's interesting alien life was actually our our next topic so you probably kind of segue wow. us over there Ooh, points for segue um, oh. so you know what bob i'm gonna give you three <laughs> points ah damn i was right there but mark you had a really really good research and you said a lot of things that were pretty much beyond my scope of understanding what you said so uh i'm gonna give you i don't know five points all right i'll see Okay, wow. I'll take okay. It. Oh, that makes you tied. Oh, okay. No, you're tied at seven. You want to skip a few in my direction. I could. Is this a new thing you do now? Just you just want to skip a few all the time? What is this? Where'd you pick this up? You ever you ever just want to skip a few? Yeah, you know nobody? Hmm? Uh, I guess it's me. Not since I was in fourth grade. Yeah, not since I've played uh, uh, hide and hide and boot. No, peek and hide and seek. <laughs> hide and boot. You ever play hide and boot? <laughs> hide and seek. I'm sorry, that's the word. I was thinking peekaboo and hide and seek and hide and boo is what mm, came out. Interesting, interesting. Uh, peek and seek. <laughs> you ever play peek and seek? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? I'm peeking. I'm, seeking. I'm about to start seeking. <laughs> oh, well, baby, I'm peeking. I'm peeking. I'm seeking. I'm seeking. Mm, I don't like that anymore. I do. <laughs> I stopped liking it immediately. Okay, well, we'll go back to the hiding boo. Are you? Are you peeking, babe? Oh, I'm seeking. <laughs> I'm on the next part. Uh, right, well, aliens? What do you say? So aliens? Something about aliens, aliens, yeah. So, yeah, we, we can. It, it's a mixed topic, right? The universe and aliens are kind of a mixed topic, but alien life form is fascinating too because we have all these fancy gadgets, and we we can perceive. I, I think, from what I know, we can perceive a decent amount about some other galaxies and planets, and like whether or not there's signs of water, organic compounds, the right atmosphere for life to exist and thrive. But we haven't seen that evidence of life yet, mm -hmm. and that's an interesting thing too because Earth. It's apparently a pretty fascinating thing in that it had all the right ingredients for life to start. But like, did the first origins of life come on like an asteroid that hit Earth? Was it just because Earth had the right stuff? Why isn't it elsewhere? Why isn't we everywhere? Why isn't we everywhere? <laughs> of course. Is that the answer? <laughs> the only scientific way to ask. Wade at the museum. The person is talking about how stars form or something. Yeah, and it's a cloud, and there's gravity pulls it together. Why isn't we everywhere? Why ain't we everywhere? You smart. You are smart. You tell me. Why isn't we everywhere? Why ain't we everywhere? I love your guys' impressions of me. They're me very... ask me something. <laughs> yeah, I'm not asking you. Me asking me. Why aren't we everywhere? You think you human, but you not. <laughs> <laughs> Only true fans know where that's coming from. Yeah. Yeah, if you you don't get that reference you're not listening hard enough only those who've been mm. watching us for 15 years <sighs> all right uh where are the aliens wh where what wait what is the question <laughs> i'm so confused anything i honestly just anything what about, about aliens, aliens mark? what about aliens mark? what about aliens okay well i so. sort of i sort of already said my piece on that i'm pretty sure alien life exists uh, in some form but i i will i'll title this second conclusion statement argument even oh well, that's weird isn't it <laughs> so so i i laid out how i think that it seems impossible to me that some form of alien alien to us life doesn't exist out there in some way or another but also i think it's really interesting and this applies to a lot of things right humanity's depiction of aliens it's weird how they're all so humany how they're all, uh, not universally, but many the depictions of aliens are like bipedal, sort of humanoid looking, just with a big head or like weird skin. It's weird how depictions of uh, so many like religious and 
mythical and other, you know, gods and all these things, they're also human. Mm. It's almost like humans just sort of imagined that. And they were like, of course we were made in God's image. God looks just like me. Is that in the Bible? We were made in God's image, I think? I, I it actually state those words? I don't know if those exact words are in there, but that's definitely like a core belief of yeah. Christianity. I was raised in a Christian house and like, we we're made in God's image, literally. We look like God looks. And like, without stating anything about the existence, why would that happen? Yeah, why would God make himself bald? Why would an all-knowing, omniscient being who could do anything that they desire in the entire universe look like us and make us look like them? And why would aliens have anything to do with how humans look? Why does God need hair on his knuckles? Uh, nobody needs hair on their knuckles. Exactly. No one has them, right? None of us have it. We're, we're normal. But like, you know... The evolutionary chain that led to how humans look today and being bipedal and stuff, there's not even other creatures on our own planet that existed in the same conditions and went through the same aeons of evolution, or I don't know if that's the right term, but the same, you know, process that really looked that much like us. Uh, yeah. We look really weird. So I just think it's, oh, isn't that weird? The title, you know? Now, Bob, this is not Pride Month. We don't have to be bipedal. We can just be pedal. It's okay. That was a joke. No one laughed. Okay. <laughs> was it? Was it a joke? Was it, was it, was it was supposed it to be very joke? funny and people were supposed to laugh at it, but it was dead silence. So. Was it a joke? Okay. Well, I'm just going to go back to my loser corner. You can be however pedal you want to be. Minus 10 <laughs> points for Wade for no one laughing at his joke. Wow. Mm. Easy there, buddy. Interesting. But yeah, no, I just think that's funny because there's no logical reason that any other form of life or omniscient beings or whatever would look like us. Mm hmm. There's a terrible form factor. What would it look like to you? Describe what you think this being should look like. Which being? Omniscient being, God being. What should this being look I like mean, to you? If a being truly was omniscient or godlike and and all powerful in a literal sense, why would they have a physical form? in the way that humans do, and or why would they be locked into a single physical form? Mm -hmm. If you are capable of making anything be real and anything you might want... I would just be boobs. <laughs> okay, well... Sorry, I didn't mean to say that out loud. That's fair, but... Interesting. You, you, said, the, you said the silent part out loud, Wayne. I sure did. You guys... <laughs> um, but yeah, like, and maybe this is the thing, maybe uh, humans have only seen that because a being that is that powerful would want to look kind of like us to make us feel more comfortable, or who knows. But like, why? Why would you not exist in all places at all times? Why would you need a physical form? If something is that all-knowing and, and wise and can do whatever, a physical form seems useless. That seems like it would narrow their existence, unless they have many physical forms, in which case, sure, one of them could be human or some of them could be human. But like, this is another thing where I think fundamentally humans have trouble understanding what it would mean to be omnipotent. And I don't understand what it would mean to be omnipotent. But why would that be related to us at all? Humans are morons. Humans are the opposite opposite of omnipotent we're we're potent <laughs> We are potent. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. That's what deodorant's for. We're monopotent. All right. Here's my. I'm gonna. I'm about to presume. Polypotent? I'm about to presume all over again. Mm -hmm. My mouth is open. My cheeks are wide. Are you Fill ready? Me. Yeah. Get your get your ears open. Get every hole you've got open for this. My presumption is on the way. Okay. So <laughs> I good. I have this. I have this like thought that life is not nearly as rare as people assume it to be. Okay. It is probably a quirk that humanity, I have, this is a totally other crackpot idea that I have. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I think we've actually talked about this on the podcast before of like this universal seeding idea okay. where once life has started, it becomes extremely hard to stop it. It is just so unreasonably persistent because the requirements to get life and DNA to perpetuate itself are not that hard and not that extreme. Sex. It, not just sex. It's, life just kind of blooms. There was this old theory back in the day, like hundreds of years ago, it was disproven, but like for thousands of years, people thought that flies and maggots just spawned into the world out of dead matter. <laughs> this was a theory. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I forget what the name of it's called, but it's like when something is rotting, maggots just like materialize out of the rotting matter. This was a, this was really an accepted fact. If you let meat out long enough, maggots would just become. And for my thing, it's not necessarily that. Things don't just appear from nothingness. But 
when it comes down to DNA and that sort of thing, it is once DNA was made, whether it was first made on Earth or not, it is kind of one of those things where it's just so pervasive, you cannot get rid of it. Spontaneous generation? Is that what you were talking about? The, I think, yeah, that was the, not or what I'm talking about right now. Spontaneously generate and meet and stuff? Yeah, yeah, that was the old term. But when it comes down to like life, I'm not 100% convinced that the DNA that we have to this day originally came from Earth. The Earth is 4.6 billion years old. The universe is much older than that. And on those timescales, any number of things could have occurred to cause solar systems to form, galaxies to form, traumatic like like collisions with various things. And we know now how tough it is to scrub things of bacteria of any kind of organic matter or trace of organic matter. Like we know how tough it is. And we know there are self-perpetuating DNA machines called viruses that aren't even technically alive that still perpetuate their genetic information. It is nearly impossible to scrub it from any kind of surface. So imagine like if the Earth was hit by a giant meteor, an enormous one, a moon-sized meteor coming. There's nothing we can do. It's going to blast Earth into so many pieces. Some of those pieces are going to be sent out of the solar system. That's how hard we get hit. What are the odds that some of those pieces, even in all the cataclysmic energy of that collision, were not completely sterilized in there? And there's a tiny itty bitty fragment of DNA or one itty bitty virus that is still just floating around, just waiting for some water, for some delicious water. And it, it goes and it goes into another solar system that's just like freshly formed three billion years into its formation because it seems the DNA arose like a billion years ago. That's what we think ish. Get one to skip a few um <laughs> and then this rock goes for you know it's like the cassini like it's leaving the solar system it goes for millions of years it floats but in the cosmic time scale millions of years of flying is not that much and it goes into a solar system one of those rocks just happens to land on a habitable planet boom now that one virus or maybe it, maybe it's not even the virus it's like a little piece of its dna but those pieces are there they're still there and they crash into this ocean and then a billion years later you get people like us going wow what the fuck is all this shit up here holy crap <laughs> who's to say that didn't happen to get life here so earth was like a perfect paradise then like a rock hit a long time ago and it was like the flu and everyone's like we've achieved it we've achieved perfection and then like <laughs> No, no, Dad, that's, what happened? that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> that's oh, not, shit. That's not the conclusion. I don't that... think that's what he was just laying out. I don't but... either. I just wanted to go there. Okay, fair enough. No, there was no life on it, but until then DNA got there and it's like, oh, shit. Well, here it is. I've always thought humanity and life in general was more like the flood from Halo or the orcs from Warhammer 40k than, <laughs> than anything really sophisticated or elegant. So you're going with the humans are cancer or humans are a plague kind of, yeah. All life is. I mean, yeah, that's the broader point. Would you say, Mark, that you think life finds a way yeah yeah i do oh, nice. yeah, i do both earned a point don't get me started on my moon theory though oh lord <laughs> moon theory I'll come later no 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 we, we don't have time god geez. well maybe next episode <laughs> a whole episode on mark's moon theory <laughs> It wouldn't take that long. No, no. But I just like I could talk about it for a while. No, I mean that it's funny because it's I guess I'm only making one argument this episode. That sounds like a lot. Millions of years of things traveling and going from one solar system to another. But you're right on the in the universal time scale. That's entirely plausible. And even though it sounds like it would be an insanely low probability event for a fragment of a planet or something that has a tiny piece of dna or virus something suspended in it hits the right planet that is habitable blah all these things would have to line up it's only an unlikely event but in an infinite universe of infinite possibilities what's that thing you said on in space infinity is just when thinking in infinites oh yeah unlikely is just certainty waiting for its turn that's the one self-referential i love it Mm -hmm. In Space with Mark Blyer, out now. Yes, go watch it. You should. It's, if you haven't watched it, I don't know why you haven't watched it. It's weird that I never promote it anymore, like, because I spent so long, like, promoting it. It's weird to think, like, once the project's done, I'm, I'm moving on to other things and, like, ah, I don't need to promote it anymore. But I forget that sometimes I should just be like, hey, go watch Space. It's pretty cool. If you enjoyed In Space, you should check out Settlers of Catan. <laughs> <laughs> I never promote it anymore, but <laughs> no, why don't we promote old videos? Why don't we? Bob, what's your favorite on your channel? What's a what's a classic my screw? Ooh. 
I like my edit of our speedrunners gameplay. Oh yeah. And especially the episode where I fall out of my chair because oh, my God. Wade kills himself in the most efficient <laughs> way physically possible. Good. It shit. turns out you should not run left when you're supposed to run right. Good shit. Or vice versa. If only there was an enormous arrow on screen <laughs> indicating which way was the correct direction. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever heard you laugh that hard before or since that particular moment. It's not even like it's such a funny event because there's lots of stuff that has happened that is objectively mm. as funny as that. I mean, something about that moment. I just lost my shit for like the rest of that day. Well, you're welcome. Good times. Uh, good times. We should play speedrunners again just as fun. We should. That was a good one. That was fun. Mm -hmm. A lot of old games we should go back to. We should just redo our channels from the start. New channel. I've start been with the same games we did. So much. New game oh. plus. New channel plus. Yes. Tune us on us. Well, not that. It's just all of us going video for video, redoing all the same stuff we've Wait, already what's... did. What's decade in Latin? We'll do tuus decatus. <laughs> tuus decatus. You got it. You heard Two it. Two decades. Tuus dickus. Tuus dickus. <laughs> tuus dickus. With three of us. <laughs> but tuus dickus is the thing. Decennium. Ooh. Tuus decennium. Is tuus Wait, what is two? Un unus duus? Duos? Unus unus decennius. You should say it twice. Duo. Additive. Duo decennium. Duo oh. decennium. Duo decennium. Duo decennium. Duo decennium. Ooh. Trio tricentius. <laughs> okay. On three. I guess tr tr tribus. 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 Oh, tribus. Tribus decennius. Tribus decennius. Decennium? Mm. All right. We'll workshop it. We're working. These are million dollar ideas. Will, cut all that out. Don't let the people know. These are these are great ideas. Yeah, don't yeah, let them yeah, hear yeah, our yeah, ideas. Yeah, yeah. We're working on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, all right, to wind this thing down, to rein it back in, I, there are so many topics we could talk about. Oddly enough, on this particular article I was referenced earlier, one of the topics is why is ASMR a thing? <laughs> and that's an interesting one, too. I learned a thing about myself recently that I find really weird. What? Pitch it in. So I've always thought I didn't like ASMR. Not like I didn't care for it, right? It didn't do anything for me. Okay. I found a specific genre of ASMR that like tingles my areas. Okay. Mm. And it, it puts me in like a trance. Role-playing customer service phone call ASMR does something to my brain. <laughs> it's so if you, you know, when you're on the phone, with like a customer service and they're like, uh-huh, uh-huh, and what's the account number? Okay, but yeah, something about okay. that interaction has always made me like zone out. <laughs> That's a type of ASMR. And I I found a video uh, randomly. I was trying to sleep. It was like three in the morning and I was like, fucking God, I hate this. And I found a video that was like a, a role-playing ASMR customer service call and uh, it'll put you to sleep. And I was like, That's weird. What is that? And I played it and it, it like hypnotized me. Interesting. So I do like ASMR. It's just one very narrow type. I don't know whether I should award or detract points for this revelation. But like, I'm just saying, I don't know what it is, but it did something to me that like hypnotized me and made it made me very weirdly zone out and then fall asleep in minutes. Uh-huh. That is fascinating. I can't knock it till I try it, I guess. Well, shout out to uh, role-playing, what was it called? Role-playing Role-playing customer service phone call uh. ASMR. It really <laughs> Really, it's important Bob's too. Bridge really just sat with you well. You enjoyed those phone calls so much that now. I've delved into it. It really matters which type of phone voice effect they use. There's kind of a right area in terms of the, the noise and the type of the like levels that are, you know, the high pass sort of thing that they use. And it also matters the keyboard sounds. It needs to sound like a cheap membrane keyboard. If it sounds like a clicky mechanical keyboard, it totally breaks the immersion. Ah, uh, okay. Right. Which, you know, usually call centers, they have like old they keyboards. They got those Dell Inspiron came with the computer in 97 keyboards. Which usually should be. All right. Probably. There's a membrane. Everyone knows this. We all learned something today, whether it was from our deep talks or from customer service ASMR. So, Don't try um, until you knock it or the inverse of that thing I said. Bob, I'm going to give you five points. All right. Which brings you, I believe, to 12. Good points. Mark, mm. I'm going to give you four points for the topics, which uh -oh. brings you to 11. That's called. Oh. What do you mean? 
uh, you said for the topics, implying to me that there's another thing for which you were going to get. There them. is yeah. oh, market yeah. research, whereas we did not. So Mark gets a bonus two points for actually doing some research. <laughs> I just knew stuff. That's impressive. <laughs> well, we assume you knew stuff. I knew things about sleep. I knew things about universes. I'm definitely for your knowledge. I award you another half a point. Oh, whoa, thanks. I don't have to give it to you. I can give it to somebody else. Oh, avocado. Thanks. I didn't offer you that. Does oh, that... half a point. Thanks. So what, what's the final score? Uh, I think I won. I don't think we should check it. Don't do any research, Wade. Damn. All right. Well, basic math, Mark has 13 points. Or no, 14 points. No, this is 13. Mark has one more point than you, I think. I don't know. It's basic math. You can't do basic <laughs> math. Wow. Don't insult the host. I can't anymore because I don't remember what I've said. You lost me on the avocado. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right well thank you very much i guess i win you do yeah. Wait, you didn't say how many points i have how many points did i end up with with my extra points that you gave me oh you were at 12 and a half which one of those is the bigger number mark was at 11 mark won by half a point it was 13 to 12 and a half was the final well that's close i guess Woo! Yeah. I just felt like, you know, we made Mark do all the research. That deserved a little bit of a bonus there. Oh, he enjoys it. I do enjoy that. He would have gotten three extra points, but he didn't give me a title on the last one. Oh, shit. No, that's why I only won by half a point. That's okay. Yeah, that really cost you. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, I feel honored about this. I did only the cursory Google searches, but somehow that was enough to get me over the edge. Damn it, if I'd done that, I would have awarded less points. I, pro oh. I, I proposed? No, I didn't propose that. What was the word? I presume. I Presu I presumed, us. I presumed all over everything and everyone. I like that. Everything is coded in my presumption. So thank you. <laughs> thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, NASCAR. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Get that. <laughs> no one's gonna Thanks, that. NASCAR. <laughs> <laughs> no one's gonna understand that reference. Oh, no, come on. Nope. Yeah. No current reference whatsoever. Everyone gets it. Everyone knows it. Everyone loves it. All right. Uh, Bob, do you have a not winning speech? You know what? It hurts, but at least you two didn't cheat and conspire against me to make me lose this one. So it could be worse. No, I did that by myself. What, you're saying I couldn't have won anyway? I'm not saying that, but I could have said that. Are you just not saying it to avoid having to say it? Did you, is that what you did? Or We'll have to have a whole episode theorizing about it, because I'm not going to say no. Now the question is just out there. Was it stacked from the start? Did I already know who would win before I even opened my mouth to say, welcome back to Distractable? The answer is no, I just kind of awarded points at the end. But maybe it's a lie. <laughs> okay. All right, well, thanks for joining, everybody. If you haven't already, go uh, check out uh, Mark and Bob. Markiplier, my skirm. Bob is back on Twitch now. No more Facebook.com slash my Maybe there is. I don't know. But there's definitely also a Twitch. Woo! Yeah, I'm back, baby. A Twitch. A Twitch. Facebook. That's not it. A Twitch. TV slash my skirm. That site you stream on all the time. That one. Yes, the one I am on. I'm Minion777. You can find all the three of us. We also have some merch stored. Oh, fuck. Store.distractiblepodcast.com? You can do it. Yeah, there you go. I can't Google anything. I don't know. I can't help you. <laughs> All right. Well, the research is out there. That is it. Yes. New merch coming very soon. We have a Discord, Distractigo. You can get there from somewhere. Maybe try the subreddit, but try the subreddit for Go My Favorite Sports Team instead of our to subreddit because the link's over there, not on ours, I think. Or maybe it is now. You, you could tweet it out. What, what, I don't know what you want. No, no. It is where it is. There can, nothing can be done. This is our one cross promotion. We're doing a Mark promotion and Tyler promotion of Go, and that's all we get. Um, yeah, stay tuned. I guess Mark will host the next one, and we'll see uh, what we talk about then. Until then, podcast out. Woo!